All right, welcome back, everyone. We are on uh, day three. This morning, we'll, we're going to be learning about flex. Yesterday, we learned about inline block and the box model. So who can tell me what inline block does to a block element? Uh, keeps it the same individual properties of a block, but puts it in the same row as other inline blocks. Exactly. So if we have multiple divs on a page, uh, as we see here, if we want each column here, labeled column by the class div, to be on the same row, as another div that has this class column, we will need to apply the rule inline block to each column. Okay, this will make each column side by side next to each other. And after this lecture, we're gonna do a bit of a workshop uh, for those that haven't correctly understood the the display or blocks assigned um it's this one here plotting our blocks all right um there's a specific way that the platform works that all the reading leading up to an assignment is going to be relevant to the assignment so all the rules that we would use for plotting our blocks would have been an inline and block and so we noticed in a bit of uh, a handful of your guys' assignments that uh, we're going to need to um, just uh, reiterate and force how to use inline and block. So I'll do a bit of it right now just so we get a refresher of what we learned yesterday. Um, and so let me open up my Visual Studio code here. Um, I'm going to call this folder flex. All right, so we create an HTML. We create a CSS. In our HTML, we want to link our CSS. So we say in the head, link colon CSS because it has the same name and it's in the same folder style that CSS is going to be accessed here. I'm going to split the screen here and pull CSS to the right. And now I'm going to copy from the platform here. So here we are. I'm going to copy this container here. And I'm going to copy the CSS rules for that for these containers here now. Now, if I open it with the live server, this is what we have. This is what we have here exactly as it looks like in the platform. So what do we want to do with this? We want all the columns to be an inline block. We have a width of 220 pixels here. So each column is 220 pixels. And we have the width of the container, which is 720 pixels. Is it not a 240 because the padding on either side? The padding on either side. So the padding, so in total, what, what would be the width of all three columns uh, side by side? I can pull it up on the box model in the inspect tool, but let's see if we can calculate this. This was an interview question for me once. So 220 padding, what does the padding add to each side of the column? 
10 pixels. 10 pixels. So what is the total width of each column? 240. 240. So what's 240 times three? 720. Right. Okay. <clears throat> so when we were working on our flags yesterday, we noticed there was a bit of white space for some of those that picked the American flag or sometimes on the other flag as well. When we were uh, creating the stripes or the bars, um, next to this uh, area on the left-hand side, the upper left where the stars were, there was a bit of that white gap that we couldn't eliminate. All right. And the reason for that is when using inline block, uh, our columns display next to each other. The white space, um, extra spaces, tabs, and new lines all count as a blank text element that takes up takes up space. All right. If we re if we rewrite our code so the next div begins after the previous div, this will determine the the extra space. So let's see how this code now is different than this because according to our calculations, our width should contain the width of these three columns, even with the padding, right? But now we see here, if we connect our divs in a way that makes our code a bit difficult, a bit more difficult to read, because if we compare this code here, every new div is on a, a new line, but this code here, this closing div is connected to this opening div, and it doesn't start on a new line, but that's the way we have to get around inline blocks um, rule here so that we can view our page and see that our result now looks like this. Do we have any questions about this? Okay, so let's let's post one through ten how inline block works. We have to apply it to all the columns for them to be side by side, and why we will have to make our closing div and our opening div connect to eliminate the white space. So give a level of understanding one through ten. If not, I'll go I'll go over it again. Let me just reiterate here. When using inline block to have our columns display next to each other, the white space, the extra tabs, spaces, and new lines all count as blank text element that takes up space. That's this space that we see between the top left and this ipsum column. Okay. So how can we get around this without having to rearrange our HTML in this funny way where the closing div is connected to the opening div? Because if we format our code, it's going to format our code to look like this. And when we may not catch it every single time, then we're going to have to go through our HTML, make these connections between the closing and opening divs. Um, so in order to avoid that, we're gonna learn a new rule, okay? And this new rule is called flex. So let's go over what this rule means. If we change how we write the code to use display flex on the parent container div, then we can write our HTML with our usual indentation and we can avoid having the new line and tab between divs take up space so that we don't have to do this every time. We're going to change the way we uh, align our columns here. Okay. So when it says here on the parent container, what does that mean? We have a div class called container. What are the direct descendants? of this 
class container. Divs class does column, C-O-L. Um, column, right. So when we see the opening, let's let's go ahead and copy this over to our code. I'm going to replace this container now. And I am going to copy this. And we're going to go over what we have here. So the difference now is that instead of having inline block on each column, we have display flex on the container, on the parent class. This is where it begins. This is where it ends. And so each div that has a class column is a direct descendant of the container class. The direct descendants, the children, now will align side by side next to each other like this because the rule display flex has been applied to the container class. And there's another rule here that we've applied that we haven't explained. Let's see what it looks like without this. This is just with display flex. Three columns side by side. We'll go over what align item center means. But just know that when we want our children to align side by side next to each other, we're going to apply the rule display flex to the parent. So if the parent has this rule, the children will align side by side. Now you no longer have to apply inline block to the individual columns that you want to align next to each other. All right, so let's look in, uh, a little bit more into this rule here. Um, now let's apply a line item center, and this will prevent the columns from stretching or inheriting the height of the parent container div. All right, so let's see what this is. Align items is a rule just for display flex. Okay, so when we apply it, the columns no longer inherit the height of the container. And there's a couple other rules that we can apply here that we're gonna try based on the platform's recommendation, flex start. So let's see what this looks like. Flex start will make the items align all the way at the top here. And let's see what flex end does. Flex N will push all the columns to the very bottom. So it goes to the very end, i.e. the bottom of the um, parent class. It does not inherit the height. Okay, let's, give, let's get a one through 10 understanding on how we can apply flex and how we can make the items move around the parent div or container. All right, great. Let's move on then. And of course, you can interrupt me anytime if you have a question. So here we have this assignment, flex our blocks. It looks a lot like the previous assignment. We're going to do a workshop after this lecture uh, for plotting our blocks. Now we have flex our blocks. 
And the way we want to solve this one is by using flex now. Right? So we have these yellow boxes. And what would be the container or the parent of these three yellow boxes? The red one, right? Because the red one contains these three yellow ones. So where would we apply flex then? To the red one. Yeah, to the red one. The red one is the parent. We want the children to behave this way, to align nicely next to each other. So we say, if the parent is display flex, the children will behave nicely. They will align next to each other. Okay. Now there's a couple more rules that correspond to the display flex rule. And we're going to go over them now. We learned about align items a little bit. We have three align item rules. We have align item center, uh, flex start, flex end. Now we're going to we're going to align these. We're going to look at these ninjas here. Okay. And then we're going to read the rules applied to them. This is what they look like here by default. They're going to have a width and height, and they have a background color. Now, if we apply flex to them, This new line here is going to make these ninjas side by side next to each other. And align items will unstretch our ninjas. Remember how when we didn't have align items on our uh, window here, and let me make this a little smaller. When we didn't have align items on this window here, It inherited the full width. And if we were to make this even bigger, it, it still takes up the full width. Okay, now they perfectly fit, but they're going to stretch themselves to the maximum capacity here, unless we say align items and then a rule for align items. This one is flex end. So align item center will center them in the middle of their parent container. So that works out nicely. But what if we want to add some space between each of the ninjas here? What we would do is apply the rule justify content. Now, this looks no different than what it was before without the rule applied. But justify content will allow us to space, uh, have some horizontal space between each of our items, in this case, our ninjas here. So justify content center will uh, horizontally uh, align our our row here of ninjas. Justify content flex end will push it to the very, to the rightmost part of the div. That would be the end. And justify content space between would evenly space out all the ninjas by the space that is between each of them individually. As you can see, the one on the left and the one on the right move to the very edge, but it calculates the available space between all the middle parts and adds that gray area. Now there's also justified content space evenly. So that adds an even amount of space between the beginning, the very end, and also the middle.
And we also have space around. Haral, if you're not feeling well, that's all right. Uh, I'll upload the video, but if you need to take a break, then don't sweat it. Okay, so we're gonna go check out this article that we've linked here at the bottom. And it's gonna give us a thorough um, understanding of all the rules here. We have flex start items are packed down to the start of the line. That's what we saw when we saw that rule for the ninjas and would be all the way to the right. Center would center them. Space between, as we saw, Items are evenly distributed in a line. First item is on the start of the line. Last item is on the end. Space around. Justin, items are evenly distributed in the line with equal space around them. So space around. Items are ev evenly distributed by the space around them. So we'll we'll go over this rule. We'll we'll do some examples here. Uh, let's just let's just read the rules first, and then we'll we'll do some examples. And then space evenly. Items are distributed so that spacing between any two adjacent alignment subjects before the first alignment subject and after the last alignment subject is the same. So this would be a visual example between space around oh it doesn't have space evenly okay so then i'll have to do that example so i'm going to make the width of the container now um a thousand no let's make it a thousand two hundred pixels now i'm going to say align item center Now I'm going to say justify content. Let's make this a little smaller. Justify content space between. And because uh, am I zoomed in here? No. It's 1,200 pixels. Space between is gonna push the ones on the edges all the way to their edges. Space evenly. Items are evenly distributed within the alignment container along the main axis. So let's inspect here. I'm going to move the console to the bottom. If I click these three dots, I can click this button here and it will move the console to the bottom. So if I inspect here, this container is 1,200 1, pixels wide. And this column is 240 pixels. I think I have a ruler here that I can measure the amount of pixels. Um, I'll, I'll play with that later. But now you can see each purple column is the exact same width. Now let's do the last rule. Um, space around flex items are evenly distributed in the line with half size spaces on either end so now you can see the columns in the middle are a little bit larger than those on the end yep if you hover over the rule it will it will remind you a description of the rule itself So half size on the end, the middle columns are exactly the same width. Okay. Do we have any questions about that now?
let's click Narciso's link here. You can download a free poster printed at Kinko's and put it on your wall if you need it. Um, here is um, some Flexbox, Flexbox properties. Thank you for this link, Narciso. I was going to pull this up, but now you've linked it for me. So there's lots of flex rules. Flex is like a library. It has so many rules associated with it. You can change the direction from up to down, down to bottom. You can add a uh, flex grow, which will make uh, one grow if you define that specific item to be a certain width. Flex wrap will wrap it all the way around. We're not going to need to know all these rules in order to use flex to, to pass our test with flex. Um, here we have space around, which has a half size on the each end. Evenly is going to distribute it each column evenly from the beginning to the middle to the end. Center is going to make it center and around is going to space the left item and the right item to the very end. And the columns are going to be decided by the, the width of the center item, how much available space is left. So keep this, um, keep this link handy. Okay. And there's also a, a really uh, neat poster for all this. This just has everything. You can print this, put it on your wall, have it there for your test. Okay, so now let's go back to the lesson here. One of the uh, necessary assignments here is to create this using the flex properties. Three rows, download some images from this link, pick whatever uh, images you'd like and, and align them neatly. Then we have a practice assignment here that you will use to make a nav bar using flex. So how could we then make this nav bar? Let's try to picture this conceptually. Like, let's draw some boxes here. So we have the container, right? And we have a list of items here. We can make this uh, an ordered, unordered list, or we can just have several P tags and a button. But because they're uh, side by side next to each other, we need to have flex on the parent, right? So what would be the parent? That's the question. Who should be the parent? Maybe this section here, this box that I've outlined, should be its own div box, its own container, so that each item here is aligned neatly within. There is now a huge space here between profile and um, the, these buttons here. So what I see going on here is a is one box that's the whole nav bar. And then the children profile and this box that contains these other boxes inside, that would have to have some display flex. And what would be a rule to, to make them push all the way to the end and separate themselves by the space between? I just gave you guys a hint. What's the rule that would make them uh, go all the way to the end and justify their themselves by the space? Yes, justify content space between. And these here, they're not going to separate themselves unless they have a rule, or if their box, if the boxes are evenly spaced here, just I've as I've uh, outlined it, you don't need to justify the content. They're just going to be nicely aligned next to each other. 
Um, so let me give a demonstration of what I'm going to show here. I'm going to just switch gears. In this example here, I've given a definite width to the parent container. If the container doesn't have a width, and I'm seeing here this background silver color. So the oh, so the div stretches all the way here. So I'm gonna say uh, width. Um, what was the original width here? Uh, I'm gonna have to go back. Seven hundred and twenty. So if I say justify content space between, and the width is seven twenty, just enough to fit each column. There's not going to be any space for it to justify itself. There's no. There's going to be no in between columns here. No in between spaces because the width is just enough to contain all the columns. If I expand the width, let's say I make it 920, then we can see the justify content rule in action. If I keep expanding it, it'll keep realigning itself. If I keep the original width that doesn't have any space for them to separate from themselves, even though I have justify content, uh, it's not going to realign. The way I go back is by using uh, Command-Z, Edit, Undo, or Control-Z. Okay, let's give a level of understanding on how Justify Content works. It's going to take some practice in order to get really familiar with it. So that's why we have these practice assignments and these core assignments. You're going to have to really put this into practice yourself. Inline block, the way we would separate them from each other is by adjusting the margin, by adjusting uh, either the width, the, the um, padding, if we wanted to make them bigger from the inside. Now we don't need to do that. We don't need, but we still can, for example. So I'm going to change the width to uh, 1020. Um, if I give, let's say if I say margin right, Now it has both justified content, separating them, giving them spaces, but I can also add some margin to the columns themselves to add that little bit of space here that you see on the right. I've added 20 pixels. This will push everything to the left if I add to the right. So you can still use margins when you're working with display flex, justify content, space between evenly or around. Yeah, I can also do left. Now the margin is pushing from the left and from the right even though we have space around or space between, which would push them all the way to the very end. So without these margins, they're all the way to the very end. With the margins, they're going to squeeze according to the margins that they're given. That's because the margin is adding to the column. The column's margin is now part of the, of the column's uh, size. So if I inspect this, uh, 
when I hover over the column, the column size is determined by its margins as well. So it is actually justified content is pushing it to the very end, but we see that gap space because of the margins that we've applied to all three. All right, so we also have a way to apply flex to the individual columns. So let's look at some examples. Here we have a row of columns. We've applied display flex to the row and to the columns, we've given a rule flex one. So now let's do that with our columns here. I'm going, I'm going to go uh, comment out these margins. In fact, I'm going to delete them so it looks cleaner. I'm going to delete this rule. And if I say flex one, what did that do? It stretched it out. Why is that? It made all of them the same size. Yes, it made all of them the same size. But what did this flex one rule? What? Did, why is that making them the same size? How can we interpret this rule? Okay, here's here's the answer. Think of each element with flex one like we like a slice of pie. If another column were to have flex two, it would essentially be taking two slices of the available space. For the demonstration of this, see the embedded demonstration below, et cetera, et cetera. So flex one, we've said, now the whole container space is like a piece of pie. And I'm gonna give each column here an even slice of pie, one slice. If we had four columns, for example, what would that look like? You're still evenly distributing the pieces of pie. So they're all going to get a fourth of the container's width. I can do this again. And each space is going to be evenly divided into fifths. So each column now gets um, one even slice of the pie. All right, what if I said this, um, this last column, I'm gonna delete, I'm gonna make it into four again. And I'm gonna say that this class is gonna be called extra. And I'm going to copy this here. I'm going to change this to extra. Extra has now one piece of the pie just the same as columns do. But what were to happen if I give it two? If we inspect here, it looks like it's taking up a third, right? If I if I deleted one of the columns now, it's taking up half of the space. So it's by proportion. If there are three columns, two of them have one piece of the pie, and the extra has two, then two is going to be half of the whole um, piece of the pie. So one fourth, one fourth, the last one is going to be one half. 
So it's a little bit of division you have to do when you're using flex, when you're applying it to individual columns. That's why the justified content rule can be pretty handy. But if you can get a grasp of this as well, it's going to be really nice when you want to control the width without having to touch the the width of uh, this extra. Instead, instead of having to adjust the width manually, giving it the pixels that you think would be half of the column size. Um, and this way, we can make our page a bit responsive. So what if I what if I change the container from a definite width of 1,020 pixels to 80%? Now, it doesn't matter the exact pixel width of each column. Because this column here, this overall container is 80 pixels. And we've said, no matter what, we're going to make extra half of the pie in column one fourth of the pie no matter how much i stretch my page it's always going to be that division there so when we're working with our assignments we don't have to adjust for responsiveness it's not necessary if you see an assignment uh for example like uh, the nav bar, you can make the container definite width according to whatever width you see on the example page. Uh, you don't have to make it responsive, okay? And don't have to worry about that, making it responsive for the test. I'm just showing you a preview of what you can do with Flex and giving a percentage uh, as the container's uh, width. Perna, are you back? Okay. Can we say flex one, one, two in the column? I think that's what I already have. Am I doing it different than you'd want to see it? Is it easier to utilize percent instead of numerical uh, for width? It depends on what you're working on. For now, you can use uh, a definite width, like I said, use a definite width for practice. Once you get a grasp of how to adjust the boxes inside of your container box, later on, you can practice with making it responsive using percentage. Because the issue becomes whenever you're working and you have a percentage width, if you change the width of the browser, then you're readjusting to match the look of the example page that you're trying to mimic. So try to keep it, you, you can work with percentage that's not forbidden, but the issue becomes, oh, my page only looks perfect if I have it at this window uh, size or this window size. So when you're doing your presentations for, um, your your group presentations, you're going to wonder, wait, I thought I had this perfect. Oh, it's because I didn't have the browser adjusted to this width. So if you're working with a defined container width in pixels, you don't have to adjust for that. You're going to know, okay, I just have to expand my, my window browser to see the full thing. Later on, when you work it, you know, in a, in a professional setting, you're going to want to have this mastered. But for this course, for these first couple weeks, to pass the test, I would say there's enough rules for you guys to memorize that you don't have to try to learn how to make it completely responsive. Maybe on your project week, you can make a completely responsive website where you can do that as an extra assignment that you give yourself. But I would not worry about making it responsive. I'm just showing a preview of how this flex and, and percentage can work nicely together. Okay, and lastly, um, we have 
a couple other rules here that we can learn. These are not essential rules for you to work with flex. These are just, we're just giving you information here. Uh, yeah, I can add a border to the columns, Spencer. Um, so uh, I'll make an outline. And I'll do it here. Good idea. I'll have I'll have this code available on uh, GitHub for you guys so you guys can download and play with it yourself just to have this view. Okay, so we're going to learn about a couple more rules. Um, I used outline because border adds border adds to the, you know, if we look at the box model of something. Border is a you're you are you are adding the frame to uh, the box, so it is actually giving some width. Outline just outlines, so it just highlights the, the edge. I can add border, and two pixels would be enough to to do the same job. Outline will just highlight the edge there, including all the, all the elements. Yeah, it's not part of the box model. OK, thank you, guys. Good participation. Um, now we have flex direction, flex wrap, and flex flow. Okay, so we can learn about uh, align self and order. The best way to do this is through this game. And it's, it's a bit of a challenging game here. Let me see if I, I think I've already completed it, so I don't want to, oh, good. I'm on level one now again. So. This is well, I did complete it, but um, this is the answer to level one. So we have Dustify without this rule. We have the whole pond is flex. Justify content. The content is the frog. Flex and puts the frog on the lily pad. I'll do one more level here. I've got the answer already. We have two frogs start on the upper left hand corner. I want to put the yellow frog on the yellow lily pad, the green one on the green. So justify content center. This is a great way to get your guys' practice up. I don't want to go through any more levels because uh, then I'll um, spoil the game. But you get the gist, right? Okay, now that we've learned flex, once we get a good grasp of display inline block, so we're gonna do a, uh, a tutorial here, a workshop after this, this lesson so that we know that you guys grasp that. But once you grasp it, leave it behind and work with flex. That's what we're gonna encourage you to do because you'll run into this little bit of white space air. And that was the point of yesterday when when I wanted you guys to work on the flags just using inline just using inline block, I wanted you guys to get familiar with it. I wanted you guys to to play with what you just learned. There was lots of ways you could have done it. There's position, which we'll learn tomorrow. Is there like a, for, a forbidden rule? We really don't want you to use that that much. Uh, on the test, you may have to use it once. But if you use that rule too much, you're going to run into a lot of errors and problems on your page. Display flex is the cleanest way to make items 
neatly align on a row. And again, you can use margin with it. So you're adding to the box, adding to that space between if you need to add a little bit. So get used to using flex as soon as you grasp inline block. Okay, I know we threw a lot of information at you guys, but just on the basics, align items, justify content and flex and the flex flex uh, number here. How are we feeling from one to 10? Cool. This is a good, this is a good explanation then. Um, all right. So with this froggy game, it's going to get really complex as you go through the levels. So what I recommend is doing the core assignment, GitHub blocks, flexible columns, work on the practice assignments as well. When you finish all that, if you have some extra time, then pray, play, <laughs> pray on the froggies, play the froggy game. But don't worry about having these rules mastered, flex direction, flex wrap, flex flows, align self, order. You don't have to know them. You don't have to master them for the test. So it's just supplemental knowledge to your, to your um, flex library that you're going to work with. What you really want to be good at is display flex, knowing how to apply it to the parent, not to the, not to the actual... Uh, tag that you're that you're using uh, not to the class that you're trying to in this case the columns applying it to the parent and then using justify content to put some space between this just assignment a, oh sorry just a, a, a quick quick note that weird flex chapter that you were just showing yes but that's not student facing so they're they're not going to see that Oh, really? Oh, good. A, a, there's admin. Okay. Oh, I see. Okay. Um, all right, then. Let's let's um, focus then on just doing flex. Uh, sorry, not flex our blocks. This is a practice using GitHub blocks. And especially, uh, even though this is a practice assignment, this nav bar. This nav bar is going to be really helpful. If you can grasp how to make this using flex, you're going to be well off for the test. Okay. So any additional questions at this time? Uh, actually, yes. What is the um, assignment that we're going to be presenting for the code review coming up later Anyone today? Anyone you'd like. Okay. Anything. Anything you'd like, um, you know, challenge yourself with giving presenting an assignment you may not have mastered completely, so that you can get some critique, or if you want to just show something that you worked really hard on, but that, um, you know, and, and you want to show off how you got to that place where you figured it out, then you can bring that as well. But the the code reviews are there for practicing showing your your code in front of others and getting that critique that you need okay thank you guys hey, very much hey josh yes before you close up um from your coding experience or CISO, you could chime in here too do you have any advice on naming helpful but not cumbersome classes in your html i would say don't worry about being cumbersome worry about being meaningful Right. Your your first priority should be to the developer maintaining your code after you leave the company. Right. So if you have a long class name, make it a long class name. If it's descriptive and if you think that the developer will know what the hell what the heck it means by reading it, then that's your priority. Right. I'm gonna do a demo this afternoon. And in this demo. Um, I can show how I would name some classes. They don't have to be perfect names. They're at first when you're coding, don't spend too much time trying to, I would say, find the perfect name. Yes, 
when you're working with a company, you're going to have to have some professional names, but names that you can understand uh, for what the div that you're working on is. What it does, where its position is. Not using repetitive names like upper left hand corner div. I mean, you may have another one there later on on the page that you're working on. If you have names that are conflicting with each other, you're going to be confused as to what you meant. And the other developer on the team is going to be confused as well, like Narciso said. So names that serve the purpose of what that uh, specific tag, what its purpose is. Um, and you'll get better practice with that as you go along. The more you, you code, the more you realize, oh, that's not a good name. I'm going to have to do this. Are, are there like um, and uh, industry-wide norms or expectations for that? Yeah, there's a naming convention. When you have uh, uh, multiple words within the class separated by dashes, Um, that's, and keep it lowercase. Um, and yeah, other there's also some standards like the BEM standard and like stuff like that, but really don't worry about that until, until you have to worry about it. Uh, mainly just focus on describing the content of the element rather than the position because position may change. Right. So don't name something like top box. That tells me nothing. Right. Name something like feature. Right. Name something um, hero. Name something menu, you know, stuff like that, rather than, you know, box and top and left and stuff like that. <laughs> Thanks. You know, you, you, for example, if we were to draw this page, we have like two nav bars, right? We have this nav bar here on the top. We have one almost on the bottom as well. If there's only two nav bars, then I, I would tend to say you can say upper nav bar, lower nav bar. But um, yeah, you, you use it at your own discretion. Imagine you're the boss of your company and you're reviewing someone else's code. If you're asking questions, then that's, you know, as the boss, how would you grade the developer based on the naming convention? Is it going to be easier for the rest of your team or any new hires to understand? And that's what the point of the code review is so that we have that experience. Okay, any other questions? Ew, I'm gonna click this link here. Yeah, so this was the standard for many years in CSS, but uh, it's kind of falling to the wayside, but it's still widely used in the industry, this BEM naming convention. Don't, don't worry about it too much really uh but it you were somebody asked the question about standards that is a standard what does bem stand for block element modifier got it okay well thank you guys uh great participation today as usual uh we'll create the breakout rooms now and uh, enjoy your assignments. Yeah, I'll be doing the workshop when, Joshua? Uh, Just... Now, now. Okay, so okay, right okay. now, we're going to do a workshop with Narciso. Uh, and if you've already turned in this assignment on the box model, just plotting our blocks, you may have done it incorrectly. So I would strongly advise to go into this uh, workshop to see how to use display inline block to make this work accordingly because we noticed some of you used um, the rules 
irrelevant to this the purpose of this assignment. Uh, some of you use position, you know, flex would work here, but this is not the point of of this assignment is not you know using flex. We just taught you inline block in the lesson above, so go through the reading and realize that the assignment following the reading is going to be relevant to the reading itself. Okay, and that's it, guys. Uh, we'll break out into rooms, and then uh, we'll meet up again at 2. Have a good one.